Okay, we should be live now. I'm gonna make sure everything's all working. And then we can get started. Audio sounds just fine. Okay, we should be ready to roll with the AFC and NFC Championships. We'll be finding out who makes the OFL Bowl today. Time to nuke Ohio. It's about time. We needed to do that a while ago. What's good, Denmark, SGYT, and Danny? How we doing, fellas? So we've got two games today, and we've also got a pretty big announcement, which will be in between these two games. And that announcement may or may not involve OFL 23. So you're probably going to want to pay attention for that. So we've got the Ravens and the Shamrocks, two AFC North teams in the AFC Championship. Dublin beat them twice in the regular season. Can they beat them a third time? Then in the NFC Championship, the Carolina Panthers and the Los Angeles Rams, two teams who have been close to the OFL Bowl but have not gotten there this year. So we'll see if this is the year where they can do it, and we'll play against one of these two AFC teams. What is good? Original Nickinator, the games. How we doing, guys? Will my prediction come to life? Nick misses playoffs. You losing in wild card. Me losing in divisional. SGYT losing in conference championship. And Husker losing in the OFL Bowl. Well, it's certainly possible. I think we all want the Ravens. I mean, I just want a good game. I don't really care who wins that much. But I just want two exciting games today. We're losing 45 to 10. Well, at least you're more confident than the games here who thinks they're going to lose 106 to 7. Good Lord. All right, let's decide which game we're going to do first. Siri, give me a number between 33 and 34. 34. We'll be kicking off with the NFC Championship. I'm here with no sound. Oh, so we can smack talk Seamill. Uh, his, his Dolphins. Eek. Where are they? They're not here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll be starting with the NFC game. Siri, give me a number between 68 and 69. 68, that would be the Rams. So we can make sure they're not wearing those ugly white jerseys. And then after this game, before the AFC game, as I said, we do have a pretty big announcement, possibly regarding OFL 23. So which jerseys do we want to rock with uh, for the Rams? We've got the white ones. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the uh, home ones. There are some good throwbacks in here as well for the Rams. Yeah, this this is the really bad white one. The yellow pants. Like, ew. I don't mind the blue pants. That's not bad. We've got the 2019 throwbacks with the gold. The goldish yellow, I should say. We can do it with the white helmet or, like, the goldish brown helmet. What are my chances of being a coach in OFL 23? Uh, I would say pretty likely. In the roll call that I did yesterday, uh, 33 people clicked the football. So that means 33 people are currently interested. So I would presume you're going to get one of the 32 spots. Blue, yellow. Where are the yellow, all yellow ones? I know they have some good blue ones. Is it like with the yellow, like the old helmets? Like the color rush? Oh, yeah, the mustard jerseys. Do we want mustard or do we want blue? I kind of like the blue ones. Which one would that be? Would that be the home option? Yeah, I think my vote's for blue. This one looks clean. If I don't, then that's just proof that you hit. Well, why would I hate you? I don't hate you. <laughs> I mean, there's 33 people interested. There are people on the list who are less active than you, so that makes my decision pretty easy. Go on, going twice. Any other votes? Sold to blue. I still have not found the controller. I don't know how. Hopefully we find it before OFL 23, or else I'm going to be set.
So let's get that day started with the NFC Championship. The number five seeded Los Angeles Rams. They were unable to win their division, but they have won a pair of playoff games. In the first round, they beat the Bats. In the second round, they squeaked away from the Detroit Lions. And now their test is the number one seeded Carolina Panthers. The Panthers have been atop the standings for a little while now, but have not been able to get over the hump. They've always been really good, but they haven't really been great. And I think this year they're trending a little bit more towards great. So it's time to see them truly play great here against the Rams. The Panthers played their first playoff game in the divisional round. They beat the Minnesota Vikings in a pretty close game. Carolina was in control really the entire time. But we didn't quit. That's all that matters. I'm just saying if you don't, that means you hate me. Well, I guess that's fair enough. But I don't see any reason why you wouldn't get to be a coach. So you'll be fine. And I don't, I don't hate anyone in the community. I, I don't hate people just to hate people. So let's see what DJ Uyunglele can do against his draft classmate, Bryce Young. I'm pretty sure DJ went one and Bryce went two, or in some order. So this is like if Jared Goff and Carson Wentz were both really good still on their original teams playing in the conference championship. The only problem is only one of those guys is going to play in the conference championship in real life this year, and Lord knows it's not going to be Carson Wentz. Thoughts on a me and Octi rivalry in OFL 23. I mean, I still want to see where everybody else goes with the team selection, which may or may not be starting pretty soon for those who don't know. But it's a really interesting idea. But I want to see where everybody else lies before I figure out what team I'm going to do because for the most part, I, haven't really, I thought about it a little bit yesterday, but for the most part, I really haven't thought about it too much. And, I mean, we're going to be announcing the teams sometime before Christmas. So, it's, it's going to be soon. Seems like everybody's rooting for the Rams. I mean, the Rams are the underdog story, but I also would not mind seeing Husker get a ring. He's been close a lot. So, I'd be happy to see Husker get a ring. Mr. Rob technically doesn't coach the Rams all anymore, although this is his team, and I think he will, he, he will be back on OFL 23. He just didn't want to coach the last year, which is fine. But... If the Rams win it, this is Mr. Rob's reign, even though he hasn't been the coach for the last year. He's the one who built this team up the way it is. And I wouldn't mind seeing Mr. Rob get another ring, although he does have one from last year, ironically with the Panthers. As he, uh, DJ connects with LaVisca Chanel, and the Panthers are going to throw out the challenge flag. <laughs> Hector switched his name to Rams coach. Hector's trying to get that Mickey Mouse ring. Because that's he knows that's the only ring he's going to win. Although he hasn't gotten to pick his own team in a fantasy draft yet. He was given a team during the year. So, who knows? Maybe he'll overdraft Greg Dortch by about 10 rounds, and Dortch will get a 1,500-yard season at some point. So I want you to pick Greg Dortch in, like, the seventh round right before Hector's going to pick him, just for the hell of it. <laughs> That'd be funny. There's a sack for Roquan Smith. The Panthers have a lot of guys who can get to the quarterback. Really, all these teams do, who are still alive. So, kids, this is why you build up good pass rushes. The four teams left all know how to get to the quarterback. I would definitely do that. Do it. <laughs> but people need it. <laughs> yeah, and if you get Dorch, you could always probably get a haul from Hector Hill overpay. Assuming we do a fantasy draft, hint, hint. Third and 15. DJ has all the time in the world, and he goes short for Cameron Latu. This is a weird spot. What does Carolina, or not Carolina, what do the Rams do here? Honestly, I would try to punt it. I would honestly try to pin them deep, because they're not really in field goal range. And... I mean, it's 4th and 7. It's not like it's 4th and 4, and they're kicking. Yeah, that, that seems like a bad idea. I would have rather seen them go for it than kick it. From 58, that's close, but not quite. So the Rams miss out on points, and Carolina's going to get good field position. I can hear right now. Oh, C-Milk can hear. So we, that means we have to stop gossiping about him, guys. Wink, wink. 
What did you miss? Uh, you have not missed much. This is the first game today, and uh, we've seen about four minutes go up the clock. So not too much yet. Although maybe Carolina's going to change that, and they do, but for the wrong reasons. It's a fumble. It kind of looked like he might have been down. Obviously, we didn't get a good angle. Shout out Aiden Hutchinson for recovering it. But, I don't know, it seems like it said fumble kind of late in the play. So that kind of leads me to believe that he might have been down. Yeah. I can't wait to decide everyone's team. The admins get all the power. You guys now get to see what uh, it's been like for me. And I guess last year, Nick, too. Giddy versus the games. Who says no? Uh, probably Giddy and the games. I think those two say no. <laughs> Everybody else says yes. Hopefully they happen to want similar teams. No, you guys, you get, you kind of get to pick your teams. So you'll be able to request five teams that you want, but we, like the admins and I, we assign them. But you'll get like to choose like five different teams that you want. So you'll get a top choice of yours. But that doesn't guarantee that you'll get your number one choice. So you'll get a team that you want, but it may not be the team you want. Or maybe it will be your number one choice. It depends on how many people want it as Carolina's going to punt. So the Rams went for a field goal at the 41. Oh, it's a fake! And it... Oh, he dropped it! That was a perfect throw, too! That throw was a dot! Who is Carolina's punter, and why does he have an arm? That almost worked perfectly. No! That would have been sick. I don't... I can't think of a time where we've seen a fake punt work. We saw the one from us back in like season two or three that lasted two whole minutes. And it didn't work. Howdy, did you miss anything? I don't know if you saw the fake punt, but you missed a near successful fake punt. And that's about it. That receiver is mid. Don't be mean to the word mid. <laughs> That receiver has bricks for hands. That might have been Jalen Rager. But the thing is, Jalen Rager's actually really good for this Panthers team. Is Jax very active? Well, Jax hasn't been very active in the last like season or so because he's not coaching the Tigers right now because the Tigers, I guess, made him lose brain cells, which I don't really blame him. But when he's coaching the team, he's active, yeah. And he's a pretty good coach. He's made the playoffs, I think, every single year he's been a coach. As DJ has 69 yards. Nice. If DJ throws three consecutive incompletions, that means he'll be six for nine with 69 yards. So we need it. On the fake punt, it's a safety. So do the Panthers have Jalen Rager playing safety too? Although their Jalen Rager is better than Justin Jefferson. C. Mills coaching chances for OFL 23. So pretty much everyone who was a coach this year who wants to be a coach next year, is they, they get the first dibs. So you'll... Be a coach. If you're not sure if you're going to be chosen, chances are you're going to be chosen. Because currently, I think there's 33 people interested, and some of the people on the form, I don't know who they are. So, obviously, that means I'm going to be picking the people who are active and here. Six for nine for 69 yards for the player whose meat I ride. That is perfect. You're right. <laughs> that would be fitting. So technically, the admins get first dibs since we are the ones assigning the teams, so we can technically pick whoever we want. And then, like, the active people slash active coaches, they'll get the next set of dibs, and then the newer people will get last dibs, but they'll still get the coach, and they'll still probably get one of their top choices in terms of teams. What we did last year, which I think we're going to do again, is you can also request for certain people to be in your division. So if there are certain coaches in the league who you want to share a division with, you can. Now, you don't have to do that. You can randomize it. But if there are people who you want to share a division with, that's something else that we did last year that we're going to do again. So you're not going to be the Eagles coach. Well, not necessarily. I mean, I'm not sure if Nekonator is going to pick them or not. So people don't just choose their favorite teams. I don't, I've never been the Lions in OFL, although maybe we change that this year. We'll see. You mean that's A.J. Terrell? Yeah, it was A.J. Terrell who dropped it. A.J. Terrell's having fun in Cancun right now.
Third and inches. Bryce Young is sacked. Wow, big play for the Rams defense. I can't tell who that is. 52, Lee. Darren Lee? Would Darren Lee be in the game? I don't know who else that would be, but I don't think Darren Lee's in the game. Darren Lee was supposed to be so good. Hector, Apple, and Denmark. That's my dream division. Apple's a pretty good coach, though. But, I mean, Denmark's teams haven't been good, and Hector... Hector's an interesting one. Although Apple's an interesting coach to have in your division, too. If you're more so hoping for interesting and fun rivalries rather than an easy ride. But yeah, that is, that is kind of an interesting division. Although, Denmark's not going to coach, and I don't know if Apple is. But I know the other two are. All right, that'll wrap up the first quarter. The Rams are looking pretty good so far. They lead 3-0, and they hit the ball. So it's not been a phenomenal start for Carolina, although obviously there's time to figure things out. No, I think Hector's coaching. I don't, I don't see why he wouldn't, but Denmark isn't, and I don't know what Apple's doing, but I know Hector is, and obviously Seamill is too. Anyone else peep that news about Zach Levine? What happened to Zach Levine other than the fact that his team is dog water? Is real coaching? I don't know. I don't know if he is or not. What is good candy? Welcome in. I mean, I guess I can check the interest thing to see if real is doing it. Let me find it. Yeah, Hector said yes, and I don't see real. So, I guess as of now, real is not coaching. It sounds like, didn't they just pay him? Yeah, they they just paid him this offseason. So, I mean, who's going to want him? He signed a max contract and isn't really a max player. So, who would give up like anything of like major value for a guy who has an injury history isn't getting any younger and isn't playing that well and just got paid. I feel like his value is at an all-time low, so the Bulls might as well just like not trade him. I guess the Lakers would, you're right. <laughs> but the Lakers I don't think have enough. Yeah, that's odd timing because they just re-signed him. I get it's been a disastrous season for the Bulls, but it's all they're also only 30 games into this new contract. Doesn't it seem a little bit early to panic, at least with him? Apple doesn't deserve to coach after Survivor lasting like five years. Who did I vote for the All-Stars today? So... I went mostly chalk. I think my only somewhat surprises were, uh, I picked Jalen Brown as one of the East guards. I thought about Kyrie, but Kyrie's missed a few too many games. Although I don't think Kyrie's a bad choice. Not that I necessarily am a huge fan of the guy, but I mean, on the court, he's been really good. And then in the West, I voted Paul George over either of the Lakers front court players, because for one thing, I'm a Paul George stand, so I kind of had to. And then the Lakers are kind of bad, and both AD and LeBron have missed some games this year. So I figured I'd let myself be biased with, with PG. Yeah, the All-Star voting opened uh, today. The Eastern Conference is so weird because they have, like, four front court guys who clearly should start with Embiid, Giannis, Tatum, and Durant, and we only can pick three. I didn't vote Durant out of that group, but he should start over any of the guards in the East. And then in the West, there's like six or seven good guards. I'm pretty sure I did Luka and Booker, but you can make an argument for Curry, you can make an argument for Ja, you can make an argument for Shea. No, fans can vote too. I think fans get like 50% of the vote, and then the other vote is for like coaches, analysts, and players, I think. The Rams defense is balling right now, holy cow. Put SGA in, damn it. Yeah, I think there's not really an argument for SGA not to get in. At least at the bare minimum as a reserve. 
So, I mean, it's about time he gets in. He's been an all-star level player for like three years. I'm voting for people who have a less chance. That's not a bad strategy. Try to vote people who you want to get in who aren't going to get starting votes. Realistically, SGA should be a starter. I don't have a problem with that. I voted Booker over him because Booker's team's better, and Booker's been balling this year. But obviously there's a good argument. Whoa, that was nearly picked. Put in Laurie. Do it. I mean, the Jazz are playing worse, but Laurie's still balling. Maybe I should just have a ballot where I vote all Kansas players so we can get Ochai into the All-Star game with his, like, two points per game. Play him, goddammit, Utah. What position should I be? I guess a relevant position, like on offense. Obviously, quarterback is the best one. Running back can be hit or miss. It really depends on your skill set. Like, IT made himself a receiving back, and Madden doesn't really like receiving backs in the sim. So his player, even though he's close to a 99 overall, doesn't play like one. Wide receiver is always a good choice. Pass rush, maybe DB. I feel like kicker would be an interesting position for a user player, too. Go into the Thunder game tomorrow. W. Get to see Shea Gilgis Alexander in action. He's averaging 3.4 and 3.2 rebounds? He's him. That's my national championship MVP, even though he didn't play all that well in the national championship game. Time to be a fullback. Oh, boy. That's what the people need. Be wearing my Cade jersey. You, sir, no ball. Good fashion. The Jazz are a rebuilding team, yet JC, Mike Conley, and other old heads are still getting minutes over young guns like Ochai. It, I guess it's partly because the Jazz have been good throughout the year, although now they're not playing so well. Hopefully they trade some of those guys so Ochai can get some minutes because, I mean, he deserves it. Totally no bias for me. It's not like he led my team to a championship or anything. No, totally not. I got a Sauce Gardner jersey for Christmas. That's a good one. I've always wanted to start a jersey collection. That'd be fun. Nice touchdown for the Rams. Who's 20? That's not Javante, is it? I think that's the backup. Steven Lance. I think his name is Steven. He gets this touchdown, and the Rams are up by two scores. Carolina's offense has to wake up at some point. There's still plenty of time, but the Panthers have laid an egg so far. <laughs> Give me a better duo than Husker and being eliminated a round too early in the playoffs. I still need a Chubb jersey, damn it. Instead of just saying chub on the back, it should say, I have a big chub. Now that'd be a fire jersey. I really drafted Sexton over Lowry in the Fantasy League. To be fair, we didn't realize Lowry was going to be this good. Better duo, Greg Roman and Wasting Talent. <laughs> I guess that, that, that does match up with Husker and getting eliminated too early. Will this be where the Panthers wake up? They only have one timeout. Fumble! The Panthers do pick it up, but wow, their offense has been just flat-out garbage. I might make a kicker for OFL 23. Oh, boy. I feel like that'd be fun. If you're a kicker on, like, an active coach's team, that'd be kind of fun for watch games. I'm not even going to lie. That'd be, I think that's a more interesting position, at least for a league like this, than, like, half the positions on defense. I'm going to my shed. Have fun in your shed. Someone should make Dick Farkas Jr. Yes, that's what we all need.
Can I be a kicker for you? I guess it depends on if I draft a kicker. Oh, it's picked off! Yeah, now everyone's gonna make the backhanded DJ Uyungo like comments, aren't they? Roquan Smith picks it off for the Panthers. Wow, that changes like everything. As I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted, I guess it'll depend on what I do with my kicker in the fantasy draft. Last year I drafted Jack Fox. I don't think he has superstar dev anymore though, unfortunately, so we'll see what happens this year. DJ Ugo Poopy. Ha ha ha. I'm dying of laughter. DJ Uyunga, like, blowing games. At least he's been better than Bryce Young, though. I mean, you can't really deny that. Bryce Young's done, like, nothing today. Can he change that here on third down? Nope, he does not. At least the Panthers score, I, I guess. But, geez, their offense looks bad. To put it nicely. Why couldn't our defense play like this against Carolina? Where do I think DJ is going to be in real life? I was hoping for UCLA. I don't think that's going to happen now. Um, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, Oregon State kind of makes sense. If he wants to go back west. Kentucky could have worked, although they're off the table now that they have uh, Devin Leary. I don't know where else would work. Maybe, like, does Pitt have their guy? Yeah, they have Phil Jerkovic, so Pitt's off the table. Maybe Ohio State? I would like to see that, personally. Not that Ryan Day is some mastermind. The Panthers have ran 17 pass plays, and they have 14 passing yards. Dear God. Yeah, DJ's in the portal. You're going to Friendsville. DJ Uyungle Life, Friends University's finest. Where is Friends University located? I've never learned that. Friends University... Nope, that's not it. It's in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, not too far away from Kansas University, Rock Chalk. Carolina's probably the longest offensive play of the day by a lot. If DJ goes to Ohio State, I will laugh at Nick so hard. I, if DJ goes to Ohio State, I will congratulate Nick so hard. My God, it's like the Chargers offense. Is Joe Lombardi the offensive coordinator here for the Panthers? He might just be. And don't forget, as we're getting through the second half, once this game ends, as I said earlier, we do have an announcement regarding OFL 23 in between both games. So, just a friendly reminder for those who may have forgotten. So who are the Pac-12 getting to replace UCLA and USC? Well, they those might not be the only teams they need to replace. Carolina has to punt it again. Jeez, their offense sucks. Um, I mean, hopefully Oregon gets out of there. Please, God. Washington, who knows? So... If the Pac-12 stands pat minus UCLA and USC, I guess they'll look towards Mountain West, look for teams like Boise State, San Diego State, Fresno State. Kind of like we did with the NCAA Next Up series. Whoa, it's a picture of the shed. The all-famous shed. No, keep Oregon. No, or Oregon can get out of there. How about this? Oregon and Utah create their own super conference together. I like Utah. I want Utah to get out of there with us. That sounds like a fun idea. 
I think Gonzaga could have a shot at being the Pac-12. I think the only problem with that is Gonzaga does not have a football program. But in terms of basketball, I think it would be good to have them at a bigger conference. I think they were linked with the Big 12 pretty recently, so maybe that's a thing, too. Jeez, these offenses stink. Meep, what is good, Nick? Name your player's shed. That's a great idea. I feel like I'm watching the Steelers play against the Steelers. This is like Matt Canada's dream. Oh, there's a good play. DJ with a really nice throw, 17 for 19. The Big 12 makes no sense for Gonzaga geographically. I don't think geographics really matter that much anymore. I mean, if we have, like, UCF in the Big 12, then you can put anybody in there. We have UCF in the middle of Florida, and then Gonzaga in Spokane, Washington, on total across sides of the country. Have I announced the next OFL? We will have our OFL announcement in between games today. So after this game, before the second one, is when we're going to do it. Tustin Jucker. Tustin Jucker. Matt Canada versus Greg Roman. At least Greg Roman is, like, a good player to use. Although I guess that's DJ and or Bryce Young because both of them are pretty good. Although only one of them has been pretty good today, and it's not Bryce Young. 20 hours more. When, doesn't the shed get kind of cold, though? Or is there, like, a whole heating system? Tungsten Jocker. There you go. Third and two, DJ's in the zone. Oh, boy. And they run the ball up the middle and get nothing. Javante Williams has five carries for four yards. Eek. I'll be there to heat you. Whoa, pause. What's that supposed to mean? Last time I went in there for Dan, it went down to 19 degrees. Jesus. Wasn't that like when the weather was warm, too? How does it get to 19 He says, Danny, I'm 23. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Uh, the the age difference... Yeah. We, we don't need to... We don't need to go any further. Spend a snowstorm in your shed. That's a great idea. Unless it gets freezing. Then maybe not. Ooh, that should have been intercepted. The Panthers are lucky. I revoke my joke. No, it's too late. You already made the joke. And now Denmark's into it. Okay, let, 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 let's not get too far ahead, fellas. I'm talking to the Ravens QB I, I don't know about that. Oh, you did say Dan. Okay, then I guess so. I bagged Denmark. I got, as the kids say, W Riz. Go out to Buffalo, bring your, sh bring your shed. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Let's pick up the shed and bring it, like, attach it to the car and drag it across the highway. Spend 24 hours in your shed in Buffalo while Bill's Mafia is jumping through tables outside and hopefully launching snowballs into the shed. I have a wife, bro. You had a wife. And now you have Danny. So, congrats, I guess. Bring her along. That sounds like a perfect idea. Ooh, nearly intercepted again. Bryce Young is doing everything in his power to lose this game. The problem is the Rams are keeping a minute. 
Another, oh, that was dropped by the receiver. Is that Jalen Rager? I think it is, which I guess isn't really a surprise. We are now through three quarters. The Rams are one quarter away from advancing to OFL Bowl. What number are we on? 19, I think. I'm pretty sure we're on 19. It might be 20. Overthrow. Yeah, we're on OFL Bowl 19. So that's where the winner of this game will go. And if the Panthers' offense keeps this up, it will not be the Panthers. Long field goal is good. They had to make that. So now it's 13 to 6. I feel like the other game is going to end like 50 to 40. And then we, have, then we have this game where there's no offense in sight. If a divisional round stream, I feel like all we had was offense. The Beats Shamrocks game might be the best game I've ever seen. And off up middle forward, Javante Williams does not get much. Ravens' defense is going to be horrid. Well, I don't think Dublin's defense is going to be much better. Remember the Chiefs? It was the Chiefs and Wizards, but yeah, that game was really good too. I think the the Shamrocks game against the Beats was a little bit better because it was a little bit less predictable. Like, as fun as the Chiefs-Wizards game was, it was kind of predictable because we knew there was going to be a touchdown pretty much every drive. Did he get the first? He did. Ooh, that was close. What number should my kicker be? 69. That's the only choice. Oh, it is a snow game. You're right. I forgot about that. The Chiefs-Wizards was in the snow, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, you're right about that. I forgot. Face mask. Yeah, if you want to come back, you can't be doing stupid stuff like that, Jesse. DJ's back in the zone. If DJ Uyunglele wins an OFL Bowl, I think I have every right to be insufferable. So if I make him 6'9", 420 pounds out of Oregon, will you draft him? I think the max weight limit is 400 pounds, but... Yeah, point remains. It better be Madden 10. Was that the game with... Palomalu and somebody else on the cover. I think probably Larry Fitz. Was that bad in 10? I think that's too far away for some people. I didn't want I didn't want to go too far back with retro if we were to do that, which you may or may not find out in about like 10 minutes. Third and two, DJ gets the touchdown. And the Rams lead by 14 with like six minutes to go. Madden 12 was you. Madden 12 was also my first Madden as well on the Wii with Peyton Hillis. Madden 12 on the Wii was fire, and then Madden 13 was cool too, although it was basically the same game, but it had Calvin on the cover, so that made it better. Because Calvin's my goat. Putin watches OFL. Hi Putin, how you doing? I hope your day is going moderately decently, but not like that well. My first Madden was Madden 01. When was your first hip replacement surgery? <laughs> so now it's put up or shut up time for Carolina. They're down by 14. 
Bryce Young has 93 passing yards. He's averaging less than five yards an attempt. That's abysmal. 2009. Okay. Sounds about right. Do you remember when we were talking about Putin in Russia in a stream and a day late? Oh, yeah. I feel like I remember that, kind of, vaguely. Weren't you, like, nine years old? No, I was 89. Wow, 89 years until the hip replacement. That That's good health on your hips. Good work. I'm proud. The Panthers kind of have to move a little bit quicker. Do you have a bull ravage your waist? So Octi caused the war. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, Bryce Young actually makes kind of a big throw. And Clyde Edwards Alaire takes it to the house. Carolina finally has a touchdown. But there is a flag. The one time Carolina's offense does something good. Jesus Christ, Panthers. Justin Jefferson. Their, I think, first round pick in the fantasy draft. First or second round. With the worst play, I guess, in OFL Panthers history. Right? 89 in dog years. That's a good answer. Octi is over party. I'm being canceled in my own stream. I'm back in the comfort of my home. So far, uh, pretty much what you've missed is Bryce Young, like, not playing good. That's one way to put it. Greg Roman calls it. It's all Greg. Greg Roman is the reason why we had the war. He's working side by side with Vladdy Putin. I told, oh, he told Putin to do I mean, Denmark does have that power. He, he can nuke any place he wants. Bryce Young self-destruction. Yep. DJ Uyunglele is outplaying him. It's almost like my prophecy from two years ago is finally coming true. Even though it's a video game, I'll still take what I can get. All you missed is me rizzing up Denmark. El Riz. Third and six. I think that's a first down. Yep. Carolina's moving way too slow. They've got to move faster. They've had the ball for like four minutes. I also caused 9-11. Oh, okay. So first you did that. Then you did the war. What else? Did you cause World War II? You know, uh, that guy named Adolf by chance? I'd try to steal your girlfriend if you had one. That's a good one. Does Nick have a good comeback? <laughs> Two minute warning. The Rams are up by 14. All they have to do is not completely fall on their rear ends and they'll be headed to the OFL Bowl. Denmark got in Hitler's ear and told him to kill all the Jews. This Denmark isn't that good of a guy, is he? How does Greg Roman have a wife? Jesus Christ. He may not be the brightest, but maybe he's not like that bad of a dude. Jeez. I exploded the challenger. Oh dear. Well, the Panthers are, season is about to become the challenger up in flames if they don't score on this play. Fourth and seven. And it is caught in the end zone, but by the wrong team. Interception for Miles Jack. And I think this game is over. Did everyone appreciate my challenger transition? I thought that was pretty funny. So it looks like the Los Angeles Rams will be representing the NFC in the OFL Bowl. And in typical Oscar Ninja fashion, his team loses a round or two earlier than they should have. The Panthers are literally the in-real-life Packers. Last year it was the Cardinals. This year it's the Panthers. 
I have a nuke button in my shed. Now I really want to go to this shed. You did a good job. So proud. I'm happy somebody noticed my transition. Of course the CPU. I, did, I know they're a CPU team, but technically this is the team Mr. Rob built. So technically this is his ring. The teacher that had all those students was watching was Denmark's wife. I hate the Jews logo, so I told Hitler to change it. The Jews have a logo? Like the little Star of David thing? Is that what you mean? Is Mr. Rob really a teacher? Yeah. He, he's, he's a teacher. Bryce Young fakes the sack. He doesn't fake another one, though. Panthers are out of timeout, so they have to move super fast. Why did he run upfield? That was stupid. I thought he might have quit. I don't remember. Did he? Because middle schoolers are not the brightest individuals. That is true. Was Mr. Rob on the challenger? I don't think so. You have my eyes and ears for about the next 15 minutes. Well, I don't. The announcement won't be that long. It's pretty quick. Final play of the game is caught. The hail mary is caught, but outside of the end zone. That's the best throw Bryce Young has made today. So that'll wrap up the first game of the stream. The Rams upset the Carolina Panthers. They're going to OFL Bowl 19. They win it 20 to six. The Panthers' offense played like utter dog water. And the DJ Uyunglele agenda really lives on. He outperforms Bryce Young. It's just like I carved it up two years ago. Yeah, middle schoolers suck. <laughs> Look at Danny, for example. Jesus. DJ played quite well, minus the interception, which proved to not be a big deal. Uh, Bryce Young was not good, really at all. Nobody ran the ball well. None of the receivers really stood out other than Justin Jefferson, who had the same amount of catches as he had penalties on touchdowns. Our performance isn't saying much. That's true, but DJ did legitimately play well. You can't really argue it. DJ was good, minus the turnover. I don't like dinosaurs, so I threw them something 65 million years ago. Oh. I'm the oh, okay. Denmark is secretly a Christ incarnate. Or incarnate. Maybe he is. <laughs> Middle school teacher Greg Roman and Joe Lombardi. Okay. All right, announcement time. So I might as well share the announcement while we're loading into the other game just to speed things up. So, Siri, give me a number between 99 and 100. 99. That, that would is be 99. Dublin. Is the games here? I know he said he was in school. Nerd. And then as the game loads in, I will share my exciting announcement for everybody. You'll wear white. Okay, so in that case, they'll wear green. Imagine having school this week. Facts. I totally didn't take a final yesterday or anything. No, totally not. All right, let's get this announcement started as this game loads in. So the announcement is regarding what we're going to be doing. Oh, I forgot. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot to click the weather thing. Hold on. Hold on. Where's the weather thing? How did I do? Uh, well, I passed the class. So, in college, that's really all that matters. All right, blizzard. I almost forgot. This game's in a blizzard. We have not had any snow games this year, at least in Season 5. So, that'll be fun. Bombing isn't that bad. Just ask Hiroshima. Jeez. Okay, now let's get to the announcement. So, it does regard, should you wear white jerseys in a blizzard? I mean, 
As long as you don't wear white pants, I think you'll be fine. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. But as I was trying to say, so, uh, OFL 23, the admins and I have figured out what we're doing. Yay, it is actually snowing. We have figured out what we're doing for OFL 23. And it was more so because of one of my consoles not working. So for those who remember the surprise stream that I was supposed to do on Thursday, what we were going to be doing was we were going to go on Madden 20 for the PlayStation 4, OFL 20, and we were going to watch the Niners play the Cardinals. And for those of you who were not in OFL 20, which is pretty much all of you guys, the Niners and the Cardinals were rivals. The Niners was my team. The Cardinals was Nick's team. We had a bunch of fun battles during OFL 20. And we were going to watch a game between the two teams just so you guys could see what that was like. So the day before the surprise stream on Wednesday, I open up my PS4 to make sure it's working and everything is fine. The OFL save file is still there. All is good. So I try to turn my PlayStation on for the stream on Thursday and it just does not work like at all so i had to buy a cord to connect to my controller to try to make it work the cord came in yesterday and it still doesn't work so that means we can't really do an ofl on the playstation 4 so by default we will be doing ofl 23 on madden 23 with a fantasy draft with the current rosters i looked at some like old rosters last night there weren't really any good ones on the roster vault so we'll be doing traditional OFL for OFL 23, which I think is what the slight majority of people wanted. I was kind of hoping for retro, but clearly the PlayStation 4 isn't going to let that happen. So we're going to be rocking with current OFL Fantasy Draft, which will start next week. I don't know the dates yet. And uh, I plan on starting the team selection process later today. So keep your eyes and ears open in the discord the team selection process will be over the next few days and i'm hoping to announce everybody's teams on like friday or saturday and then the fantasy draft will start sometime next week so that's the plan i think i did everything right i did everything the tutorials told me to do so i'm pretty sure i did all i could Do the team selection right after the show. I still have to like set up the announcement and stuff. I haven't typed all that out. But it'll be like shortly after the stream. Oh, well that's a start. The Ravens get like 50 or 44. Close enough. Math is hard. Sex isn't all good, kids. Just ask the AIDS Foundation. The AIDS Foundation needs, like, a spokesperson. Personally, I'm nominating Magic Johnson. Hey, look, we have offense. After watching a whole game pretty much without offense, we now have offense. General Dicker will be the goat. Dicker, the real Dicker, the kicker. Gotta go. See y'all later. Have a good day. Well, thanks for coming in, Candy. Ooh, what a throw by Dan. What a start for the Ravens here in the AFC Championship. The Ravens getting right to work as Stefan Diggs gets the touchdown. 42 seconds into the game, and the Ravens are already on the board. Not a bad start. I told you there was going to be a lot of points today. It doesn't even look like snow. It looks like mushy snow. So, although there is a little bit of snow still falling. Oh, God, they're dabbing. The Shamrocks are going to win by 30 now just because of that. It's not 2016, guys. Let's get with the program. <laughs> Dan almost finished as fast as Danny. Jesus Christ. I mean, Dan did it in 42 seconds. That's pretty fast. So here's Lamar Jackson leading the offense. Lamar played outstanding against the Beats. Uh, Dublin's offense has been pretty much flawless through two playoff games. So we'll see what they can do here. For your information, it takes me 20-plus minutes to do it. Okay. that That's definitely what we uh, wanted to hear today.
30 seconds to finish, 20 second, 20 minutes to clean up. That sounds about right. With a dildo, Danny. Jesus Christ, you guys are harsh. Good throw by Lamar for a gain of about 10. Congrats on your win, Baltimore. We're two minutes into the game. And the Shamrock's offense looks pretty good so far. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I told you in the last game that we were going to see a lot of offense today. So far, again, it's only been two minutes, but we've seen more offense than we did in the entire first game, it feels like. You already know I'm the most hated member of... How, how many people hate you? I don't hate you. No one needs to hate each other. Jesus. Jesus. Dublin has won. You, I love how you guys are both giving up already. One of your teams is going to win this game. Somebody's going to win. Savell so Smalls is hurt. That's kind of a big deal because he's kind of a good player. I forgot he was on the Ravens. Unless that's not Savell. No, that is definitely Savell Smalls. Yeah, they got him in the offseason. That's right. This is the first time I've ever heard of Danny. Denmark, this is Danny. Now you guys know each other. Denmark likes sheds. And, uh... What is Danny like? Danny likes... Um... He also likes sheds. You both like sheds. There you go. Danny likes feet. That, too. Yes. I bet Denmark likes feet. There's another thing you probably have in common. I guess Fanny. Who is Fanny? Fanny is almost as forgotten as dogs in China. Okay. let. That's bordering on crossing the line. Let's not get too close to the line. Everybody goes straight to the feet. Dublin's getting close to this end zone. The Ravens had like three plays. Dublin's had 11. So two very different drives, but they're both going to result in a touchdown. One time. Are we sure it's one time? I don't know. Maybe it is. I'll take your word for it. So both of these teams have scored more touchdowns than the Carolina Panthers did in the first game. And so it is now 7-7 here in the snow. It was most certainly not one time. I mean, if everybody says it wasn't once, it probably wasn't once. Second and eight, a quick sack for Jalen Ramsey. They had him blitzing, and I guess it worked out. Danny finishes as fast as Deshaun Watson in a children's hospital. Oh! I just had to envision that, and I wish I didn't. <laughs> Good Lord. Third and 18, and Dan goes with a check down. And they get it! Okay, that's the first time I've ever seen a check down work on third and 18. I think Denmark meant Carl Malone. Yeah, him too. The Ravens just claimed Sammy Watkins. Why? Sammy Watkins is cooked. It, if, it, if, if week one hadn't happened yet, then I would get it. But it's not week one. So... I don't get why they're doing that. The Ravens are just trying to build up like a washed receiving court. First to Sean Jackson, now Sammy Watkins. So Quinn Miners is hurt for the Ravens. That's not ideal for them. 
Ooh, that could have been intercepted. Third and four. Dan chucks it up. It is caught. Holy hell, what a catch. Is that Diggs again? No, it's DJ Moore. The best receiver in the league this year, an offensive player of the year finalist with a huge touchdown. DJ Moore scored 21 times in the regular season. He was the best receiver in the league, and through the first five quarters of Ravens playoffs, he has looked like the best receiver in the league, and then some. That was a good throw, but DJ Moore deserves most of the credit. If DJ Moore was still on the 49ers, maybe you guys would have beaten us. What did the Niners even get for DJ Moore again? I don't remember. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, you guys made this trade a while ago. Oh, I thought it was more recent. Jeez, this is a lot of scrolling. Holy cow. A first, a second, a fourth, a seventh, Devin Duvernay, and David Njoku. Well, I guess that's a lot, but all I know all those players are gone. I don't know who the picks turned into. Want more jokes, just like you in the divisional round. We tried Good throw. Wow, to the 17. You got me giggling like a schoolgirl. Do schoolgirls giggle? First quarter in the books. The Ravens have 146 passing yards. The Shamrocks have 152. While uh, Bryce Young in the entire first game, I think, had less. <laughs> Epic low-key might have been John Vincent. Well, DJ Moore is better than John Vincent, so... I still wouldn't say that worked out, although John Vincent is good. <laughs> second and seven. Ooh, I thought that was intercepted for a second. Oh, boy, that was close. Now third and seven. Okay, but put it this way, I didn't have to pay DJ Moore. I think based on how DJ Moore has played this year, he is not worth a price tag. He's been very arguably the best player in the entire league. So I don't think he's worth a price tag. Although I guess cheap John Vincent is arguably better than expensive DJ Moore, but expensive DJ Moore is really darn good. I don't think DJ Moore would have 21 touchdowns with me. I guess that's fair. You're probably right. As Jonathan Taylor, everybody's favorite number 19, scores a touchdown. I told you there was going to be a lot of offense. This game now has, I think, this, I think more total points than the first game. And there's 7.20 left in the second quarter. Are we going to have the Chiefs and the Wizards 2.0? So far, it looks like it. Oh, fumble on the kickoff, and it's picked up by the Ravens. That was a hit stick animation, so that was a fumble. That was close. That could have been really not good for the Ravens. So a near disaster with the turnover. I should have said dive on the ball if it comes free to liberate it. Okay. Nick Bonito, I think the former Raven, right? Makes the play.
Now third and long. Another hit stick fumble again. Since it was a hit stick, that is a fumble. And this time it is picked up by the Shamrock. Stefan Diggs coughs it up. I think the game's is fascist. I read that as racist at first. I was going to say. I don't know about that. Dublin is starting to move it a little bit. If they can take the lead, that'd be a big deal. Jonathan Taylor is in the zone. And they will. A touchdown. I Who's number one? Is that Van Jefferson? I think it is. Van Jefferson puts the Shamrocks ahead with 531 left in the second quarter. Even if we win, we will lose to the evil, uncaring robot invaders. The Rams are robot invaders, huh? That's a new one. I don't think it's time to panic for the Ravens. They're only down by seven, so I wouldn't worry just yet. But points on this drive would be nice. Heard it here first, kids. Rams equal robots. Here is Dan the man. That could have been a turnover. Offense. The offense has been really good so far. I wouldn't be worried about your offense. I'd be worried about your defense. The offense looks really good, minus the turnover. They've been fantastic. Another nice first down. Is that Diggs? No, that's a single digit. Who's one? I don't know who number one is. I know DJ's number two, but I don't know who one is. That might be Cortland Sutton. Here's Ezekiel Elliott. Gets about four. The Ravens haven't really tried to run the ball. Actually, neither team has. And I guess it's working because both teams are throwing it with ease. There's the non-working Joe Lombardi screen. Now third and four, and they get it again. This time DJ Moore. Another first down. Dan is cooking. He looks like an MVP. The way he's throwing the ball today. <laughs> but the clock is ticking. If I'm the Ravens, I might try to chew some clock. Don't let Dublin get it back with too much time. Because ideally, for the Ravens, going into this half tied. Because Dublin does start with the ball in the second half. When will the awards get announced? We'll be doing that during the OFL Bowl which will be either tomorrow or Thursday. I don't know which one, but it will be one of those. And then, as I said earlier, the fantasy draft for OFL 23 will start sometime early next week, like Monday or Tuesday or something. Dan misfires that time. I'm headed to Ohio next month. I'm really sorry to hear that. Wondering if you thought it would be a good idea for me to give Nick a visit. Well, I don't know where Nick specifically lives. Good touchdown for Zeke. But um, I would pay good money to see video footage of that, personally. You should let me announce the team selection. 
I mean, you can write out the announcement, but show me the announcement beforehand just so I know what it looks like. But, I mean, if one of you guys wants to do it, that's fine. You live 20 minutes from me. Do you know where I live? If that's the case, I want to see the shed. Nick would probably put a Glock in my face. Okay. Huh. I don't know if Nick has a Glock. Maybe he does. I don't know. You can come by anytime. Great. I would pay good money to go into that shed. If you visit my house, I'm calling 911. <laughs> I mean, I guess that is an appropriate reaction. I'd be a little bit concerned if somebody showed up to my house. I have a shotgun. Is it in the shed? We could play cops and robbers, but, like, with a real shotgun. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor is in the zone, although they're not really giving Jonathan Taylor the ball. And they haven't really needed to because Lamar Jackson is pretty good. Wide open throw. Who was covering number seven? I believe that's Marquez Callaway. It's for when people like Danny come by. Oh, okay. Ismu keeps telling me he's visiting me on Christmas. I hope he does. That will prove to be a fun afternoon for you guys. Or maybe not. I don't know. Dublin is one timeout, so I think the Ravens will still have enough time to at least try to get a drive going. And there you go. There's a touchdown for the Shamrocks. I bet that terrorist, Will Anderson, got three sacks. I don't even know if Will Anderson has snipped the backfield three times. I think it's likely that Dublin will take the lead with Isaiah likely swinging the putter in the end zone. My family would be in a surprise, that's for sure. <laughs> I guess so. Foot injury for Devin Duvernay. Oh, no. It'll be 71-65. I mean, that seems a little bit rich, but I guess with how well these offenses have played, I wouldn't put it past them. Bro would have to quit the cursing and call me by my real name. The Ravens have gone for a lot of, like, short throws and checkdowns, but they've all worked. Their receivers have done really well, like, after the catch today, for what it's worth. Do you pronounce it Eastmoo? I think so. That's how I've said it in my head, or out loud. And Eastmoo sounds a lot better than Esma. Dan chucks it up for the end zone, has a man wide open, and it's a touchdown for the Ravens. I believe that's Cortland Sutton. He flat out burned that corner. Twenty-eight to twenty-eight at halftime. I knew there was gonna be a lot of offense, but I didn't know there would be this much. This is fun. Because I don't think it's an I don't think it's an abbreviation. I think it's a word in like Latvian. I don't know why he chose Latvian, but he did. Maybe he's a fan of Kristaps Porzingis. I don't know. How many yards do they have at passing? Dan probably has no exaggeration, like three hundred. And Lamar is probably 200-something. 
Dan is 282, Lamar is 212, and Dan is a perfect passer rating, while Lamar is not too far off. This is not AFC North football, especially with the snow. It should be like 6-3. to three. Not this. This is not AFC North football. This is Big 12 football. Am I watching Oklahoma and TCU right now? Tipped in the air and complete. If the Ravens win the OFL Bowl, does Denmark get a ring? Even though he, his career winning percentage as a coach is about as good as Hugh Jackson's. Twenty-three seconds in timeout. Certainly enough time for them to score before halftime. Lamar is going to chuck it downfield. No shot. He just caught that. Was that one-handed? No, hold on. I want to go back. I guess it's too late now. I think he just caught that with one hand. What is happening? What on earth is happening? This is wild. This is literally Chiefs Wizards 2.0. This is insane. That wasn't even a bad defensive play. That was just like an unbelievable catch by Marcus Galloway. See, look, this is really good coverage. Who was on him? 31. Lewis Seahorn. Not much more he could have done with Marcus Callaway reaching his arm out perfectly to catch that. That's insane. That's like the Justin Jefferson catch against the Bills. My lord. What a total difference between these two games with the exact same sliders and everything. Both teams changed their defensive playbooks before this game, and I think they uh, might regret it. I googled Ismu, and it directly means but in some different language. I'm now fully expecting a Hail Mary. Dublin knows a thing or two about giving up Hail Marys. So, it definitely would not be the first time. They do have a lot of receivers out wide. They might actually try to do it. They are going to try to do it. Or not. Okay, maybe they will. They still have two seconds. Hail Mary time. Can the Ravens tie it up before halftime? It would be the only fitting way. Dan has to get rid of it quickly. And it is caught, but at the 17. Darn, that would have been fun. But there was too much pass rush quickly on that play. So Dan is on pace for a little bit shy of 700 passing yards in this first half. No, I am not exaggerating. 700. 35 to 28. Dublin leads. The winner will face off against the Rams, who just won 20 to 6. Dublin scored 35, and they didn't even start with the ball. There have been zero punts in this game. Every single drive has been a touchdown except for the turnover. And we might get another touchdown on the kick return. Didn't Dublin just get one last week? No, not a kick return touchdown, but he gets it all the way to the one before being tracked down by the kicker, I think. What is this game? Was that the kicker or was that somebody else? That might have been somebody else. I don't think the kicker is that fast. Who is 31? Did he have the return last week? Kevin Kirkpatrick. I think that was the same guy, Kirkpatrick. Kevin Kirkpatrick knows a thing or two about returning kicks, clearly. That fumble literally might be the difference, yeah. If this keeps up. That might be the easiest drive ever. A one-play, one-yard drive. Yeah, Marcus Calloway has 157 receiving yards at the half. That's not as crazy as Dan's 330-some passing yards, but still crazy. So Dublin is now up by 14. The Shamrocks look like an unstoppable machine on offense. I don't know how the Rams are going to be able to match up with either of these teams. I've got to be honest. Although I guess the Rams' defense was really good this last week, but still. I don't know how the Rams are going to stop either of these teams. 
I think the winner of this game goes into the OFL Bowl as the favorite. And right now, Dublin is up by 14. There's still plenty of time. But the Shamrocks do have the slight edge, largely in part by the fumble. <laughs> as the Ravens get called for a hold. If the games wins an OFL Bowl, he has every right to be as insufferable as he wants. Just saying that the winner of this game is putting up like 10. That would be funny. I will say, neither their defenses look all that scary, but... Third and two. The Ravens kind of got to get this, and they do. Has every third down been successful except for the fumble? So Baltimore again is moving it slowly, but so far efficiently. Ezekiel Elliott breaks a tackle. He's got one man to beat, and he beats him off all the way. Pause for a touchdown. So now it's a seven-point game once again. As far as I know, Nick doesn't own a Glock, but he has a Glock between his legs. Oh. I think I know what that means, guys. You can't fool me. I'm familiar with your game. Shaq on being familiar with Zeke's game. No, he's trans, Danny. Oh, you learn something new every day. Jonathan Taylor is still in the zone, and he has eight carries for 20 yards. He has done nothing. The Glock is bigger than your entire manlyhood. Jesus. Wait until he realizes Glocks are a staggering four inches. What's wrong with four inches? That's, yeah, that's well above average. Right? I think. That's, that's not even above average. That's like large for a Glock, right? Third and nine. Lamar overthrows him. We're going to have our first punt of the entire game. It only took us two and a half quarters. But we finally have the punt. I never thought I would see the day. So now the Ravens have a chance to tie it up here after the punt. I forgot what a punt was before that play. Punts are cool. Of course, Lamar running back would overthrow his receiver. Lamar running back also has like four passing touchdowns, I think. Pretty good for a running back. Zeke trucks another dude. Maybe they should give Zeke the ball more. They're running it better than Dublin for what it's worth, and their passing games have been evenly dominant. What's the most passing yards in an OFL game? I guess whatever Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen threw in that Chiefs and Wizards game. I want to say one of their totals started with the number six. But I could be wrong. Let me try to find it. There's more points in this game than, like, that game at this time. All right, let's try to find out how many yards they had. Josh Allen had 561, and Mahomes had 529. 
So both of these guys could theoretically pass that. Unfortunately, because of my Glock condition, I tend to shoot blanks more often than not. Josh didn't have 700, but he had seven touchdowns. So that's probably where the seven came from. But he did break the record. And I don't think there's been more passing yards in a game I can think of than that day. Maybe in the, the Broncos-Tigers game in Season 1. Let me try to find that. That game, there was a ton of yards. Brady at 563. So I think that's one or two more than Josh Allen. Oh, the Ravens scored. Wow, what a surprise. Uh, so Brady at 563, I think that's the all-time record, and Russ only had 380. Only. So I guess 563 is the record. What was the touchdown? I don't even see it. Let me go back. So it was a passing touchdown to Cortland Sutton again. Cool. 42-42. A little awkward to take a piss, but you can work with it. Which looks better, F7s or speed flexes? Are those like helmets? Um, I don't know. I'm not a helmet expert. Secondary, run faster. I should have gotten every quarterback. In the fantasy draft, the game's just going to try to be like Garrett and have like four 90-plus corners, isn't he? I can already see Denmark's cornerback room next year. Jair Alexander, Patrick Sertan, Sauce Gardner, and Trayvon Diggs. I can already see it. And then at quarterback, he's going to be starting Daniel Jones. I don't have a Glock. I have a Krev... Okay. I don't need to... I don't want to have to envision this stuff. I'm scared. Mama, I'm scared. Get the gun. Yeah, Lamar is only has five touchdowns and twenty three for thirty. Nah, I'm gonna. What is Sauce's rating right now? Does, did they give him superstar? I know he didn't have superstar at the beginning of the year. Lamar chucks it up. It is picked, but out of bounds. So now the Shamrocks have to punt it again. What's happening? I guess it was a matter of which offense is gonna break first, and it looks like that's Dublin right now. Take me out to the woods and let me loose. Alrighty. Knowing me, I'm going to have three 85-plus receivers, but somebody like Kyler Murray, who will all of a sudden be bad when he was on your team, just like when Kyler was bad on your team this year at running back. Dan is currently at 410. I don't think he's going to break the record if the Ravens keep the pace they're at on defense. If the Shamrock's offense plays well again, then maybe he will. Three quarters in the books. 42-42. The Ravens, I feel like, have the momentum right now because their defense is finally starting to play well, but they're not winning. It's still tight. Dan and Zeke are in the zone. Oh, dear. That's frightening. The Shamrocks are about their two top pass rushers, Carl Lawson and Keon Johnson, who both got hurt in the last game. Along with a terrible corner room, but a decent D line. I feel like Cobra is going to do what Denmark, or, or not Denmark, what the games is going to do. And his cornerback room is going to be like Jalen Ramsey, uh, JC Horn, and a bunch of other good dudes. AJ, AJ Charles not good, though. In the game, not real life. In real life, he's cool. But in the game, eh, not so much. I'm going to form a team of convicts. That's what I did this year, and it didn't work. My team has been all criminals, and I never made it past the divisional round. So, as someone who knows from experience, it doesn't always work. Unfortunately, Henry Ruggs and Matt Ariza could not push us over the hump. Maybe we should have gone back a little bit farther, tried to find someone like Aaron Hernandez. Or when, if, if Najee ever went down, we could have gotten a guy like OJ out of the backfield. I feel like Octi purposely made me miss out on all the good corners. I, Why would I do that? I, I definitely did not. Maybe Danny should be the Cowboys instead of me. 
AJ Terrell has been booty in real life, has he? I mean, he'll still have a good rating in the game, but we know that, or at least I know that in the game, not so much. Because you hate, why would I hate you? I don't hate anybody. I went over this earlier. He's been Jair Alexander bad. Okay, so he has been booty. Although, to be fair to Jair, he's working with a defensive coordinator who has no clue what he's doing or how to use him. So I think Jair deserves a little pass, but on the flip side, he also never should have made the Pro Bowl. Breaking news, Dan has committed tax fraud. They got to take Dan out of this game. That's not cool, man. I don't care what his rating is. Martin Emerson, Martin Emerson is going to be on my team. Martin Hemerson. That kind of goes hard. I'm not going to lie. Aaron Hernandez likes to hang out. Yeah, he... Um, whenever we, we hang out with Aaron Hernandez, it's always a killer time. Are we adding OFL Legends? That's something that I haven't entirely figured out yet. I want to see the draft pool first because I don't want to like add too many really good players to make the league OP. But on the flip side, that is still something I'm thinking about as well. Zeke gets another touchdown, and the Ravens have scored 21 unanswered points. They're up with five minutes to go. <laughs> I should hire Chris Beard as my coach. Oh, dear. Like the idea of them all being 85 superstar and like 23 years old. I think that'd be a good spot for most of them. But I don't want everybody's team to have like too many good young players. I don't want the league to be like inflatedly good. But on the flip side, it also would be kind of fun. And remember with Madden 23, the free agents, the contracts for the fantasy draft are different. So it's not where like... All your late picks are free agents early, and all your high picks are free agents later. Madden randomized it this year, which is good. So I think, like, for example, your third-round fantasy draft picks are only on one-year contracts. So let's say you pick... I don't know. Um, let's say you pick Laramie Tunsil in the third round. You want to get a good offensive lineman. Woohoo! You got to pay him after the first... This, after a sim year. Assuming we do a sim year, which I don't see why we wouldn't. I'm going to hire Urban Meyer to be my coach so we can ground, grind out wins. Yeah, it's not random. You're right. It's not random, but it's different. But I'm pretty sure that like the third rounders and the sixth rounders, they only have one year. So it's I think there's like a set like code to it. So you're right. It's not random, but it's different. So don't pick a QB in the third round. Yeah, exactly. That That's not a good idea. I think the first and second round picks are still like four to five year deals. So for your top players, you're going to have them for a while. So grab somebody who you really want, especially if it's at a position that, you know, costs a lot of money. Chris Beard would be sure to put the opposing teams in a chokehold. Yes, he would. I know Brett Favre likes Wrangler jeans. Chris Beard likes strangler jeans. Here's Jonathan Taylor up the middle. Lap Dance Lance is going to be my QB in round two. Book it. I think he only has starred this year. Unless they took him down even more, which would be stupid because he's hurt. Round three, pick a younger guy, give him a seven-year deal. Yeah, pretty much. Especially at a position that doesn't cost a whole lot. Like, not QB. Why did that make me laugh? The Strangler Jeans comment? I'm proud of that one. Fun fact, Brett Favre was born in my best friend's hometown. Does your best friend know Brett Favre? Maybe you can ask him about how much money he's stolen. And if maybe we can have some of it. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? OFL Monday uh, loitering thing. Let's do it. Fun fact, didn't ask. <laughs> I'm picking Mike effing White. Are you going to do it in the third round? Because if you do, you're going to have to pay him early. Second and ten for Dublin. They get just shy of the first down marker. 
I don't care about Brett Favre. I prefer Brest Favre. Man of culture, I see. Uh-oh, Lamar is sacked on third down. Sadell Smalls is hurt again, so the Ravens have to call a timeout. That could be bad if Dublin scores here on fourth and eight. The game and the season possibly on the line for the Shamrocks. Keyword is possibly. Lamar under pressure, rips it for the end zone. It is barely caught for a touchdown, and this game is tied up. Assuming he makes the kick. That was a ballsy throw. I don't know why the corner didn't make the play. There was a lot of pressure. Bringing JT... Is JT Barrett even in the game? I doubt it. I know Tyree Jackson is. Maybe this is the year where I can finally have Tyree Jackson as my long-term quarterback. I've been waiting. I tried to do it this year, but since the, the whole issue we had with Madden previously, I couldn't. We are really ignoring this game, but this game is great. It is phenomenal. This is excellent. All right, this is Dan Times to Shine. Time to show why you were the number one pick. Time to show why you were the MVP front runner. It's time to show why Denmark's shed creates magical people like you, Danny boy. All they need is a field goal. Ooh, that was close. That could have been a huge play. Good play by the corner. Thanks for calling me, Matt. I was definitely talking about you. Yeah, totally. Second and ten. Dan's going to take another shot. First time didn't work, so he makes sure the receiver has a little more room. That's, I think, DJ Moore. No, nope, it's not. It's Corlin Sutton, who scored like 12 times today. So the Shamrocks are going to have time, but shout out to Dan, the biggest throw of his life. I don't think anybody had a doubt that Dan was going to let the Ravens score on that drive. The problem for the Ravens, not that there's a whole lot to worry about with them, but there is still 50 seconds on the clock. Dublin has three timeouts. Dublin can absolutely score here. So either the Ravens get a stop or somebody gets the ball and scores first in overtime. Dan really is him. He really is that guy. Fifty seconds left. Double is all three timeouts. I don't think they need to panic. They just need to be smart. I'm loving all of his support. Seems like the Ravens' pass rush has finally shown up. It's not like they have four guys with at least 12 sacks or anything. Lamar with a strike downfield. Oh, I thought that was intercepted. They got to call time. What are they doing? Okay, there you go. A man can dream, Nick, just like you dreaming about a girlfriend. You'd wet your Huggies diapers if you tried to throw the ball that far. Ooh, that should have been picked. 38 had it right in his hands. That might have been Osiris Kane. Don't call it the... Why? There's 27 seconds. This is your last chance to score in regulation. Timeout number two. Use it. Don't be stupid. There you go. There's 11 seconds. They have 11 seconds and one timeout. So realistically, they have two plays. Two plays to score a touchdown. From the 22-yard line. They don't have to throw it to the end zone right away. They can. They shouldn't have done that, though. All right, this is it. Now he's got to go for the end zone. An OFL Bowl appearance is on the line for the Shamrocks with four seconds to go. Lamar floats it up. It is incomplete in the back of the end zone. This game is over. The Baltimore Ravens are going to the OFL Bowl as they beat the Shamrocks in an absolute classic 56-49. to Dan, the man, does it again. Wow, that was fun. I don't know about you guys, but that was fun. Dan with a perfect passer rating, 30 for 35, 528 yards, only five touchdowns. I thought he had more. Uh, Lamar was pretty damn good, too. 34-47, four 
37 and 6. The difference between these two teams was the run game. Ezekiel Elliott on 15 carries had 139 yards and 3 touchdowns, whereas Jonathan Taylor had 10 for 24. Isaiah Likely, 11 catches, 2 touchdowns. Hudson Henry, 10 for 123. Cortland Sutton, good lord, 8 for 224 and 3. Callaway, 7 for 171 and 1. Van Jefferson, 6 for 67 and 2. Jonathan Taylor with a touchdown. DJ Moore with a score. Diggs with a score. And a pretty bad fumble. Whew. My goodness. Well, that was something, guys. That was something. So the Ravens and the Rams is our OFL ball. That's a fun matchup. How many points are the Ravens favored by against the Rams? Probably about six or seven. I think would be a realistic number. The Ravens should win this game, but you never know. The Rams are a tough opponent. They've won three playoff games for a reason. Let's look at the Pro Bowl roster. Bryce Young does not deserve to be there after the game he just had. <laughs> All right, how many Vikings are there? You guys can count for your own teams. We, Najee didn't get in? What? Oh, no, he did. I'm blind. Never mind. So we have one. Pittman, maybe? No, that's stupid. Only one still. Jeez. Gotta have the, there's two. Iki Aquano. Three. Miles Garrett. Four. Cameron Curl. Okay, we had four. Did Fletch make it? Who is Fletch? I don't know who Fletch is. Wait, was AJ Terrell there? I, I, I need to see that. Oh, Fletcher Cox. Who calls him Fletch? Is Fletcher Cox still even in the league? I have no idea. AJ Terrell was CB4. Mother of God. At least his team is out, and he can't win again. So this is what our playoff bracket looks like. The Ravens and the Rams, the two R teams in the big game. Who won the Players of the Week? Probably, who's going to win it for the AFC offense? That's what I really want to see. They give it to Dan, probably deserved, along with Jalen Ramsey, DJ Uyunglele, and Miles Jack. You had eight. You had eight Pro Bowlers and didn't make the playoffs. Wow, that's impressive. I don't know if it's impressive in a good way or a bad way, but it's impressive. All right, so that brings us to the OFL Bowl. We have made it. The Ravens and the Rams, which will be in the next stream, which will be either tomorrow or Thursday. I'll let you know probably later today. I don't know which one, but it'll be one of those. And then we will be done with OFL 22, and we'll be able to start OFL 23 again pretty early next week with the fantasy drafts, which will obviously be split into multiple streams because we cannot do a 25-round fantasy draft in one day. Where is the LFL Bowl being played? That's a good question. A few yearly awards. We did that kind of. Although the yearly awards don't matter because we have our own vote. Super Bowl Miami. So not only did the Dolphins get eight Pro Bowlers, but they had the Super Bowl in their backyard. Or the OFL Bowl, excuse me, not the Super Bowl. Let's check the injuries. Chandler Jones is out for the Ravens. And nobody's out for the Rams. Okay. Cool. So that'll wrap it up. OFL Bowl will be in the next stream. Which team will be able to add a ring? The Baltimore Ravens or the Los Angeles Rams? Should be fun. Peace out.